Hey, it's Doris with all the books. It is Thursday, July 5th, and we are getting ready to head to Apalachicola, Florida, which is a little town, two towns over from where we are, and the site of the, the ice machine innovation. Yeah. Um, if you watched my last Florida vlog, uh, I was reading the book, The American Plague, about the yellow fever epidemic in the United States, which had several iterations. Um, and the ice machine was invented here in Florida in a tiny little town. I guess it wasn't so tiny back then, but the yellow fever kind of shaped uh, North Florida and shifted it. The town that I grew up in, um, and we may stop there, was actually this close to being the capital of Florida, um, but the yellow fever wiped it out, and so now it's a teeny weeny little town, which I enjoy. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to go see that, the John Gorey Museum, and check out the coast over there. And let me catch you up on my reading because I finished up some things and now I'm starting a whole new slate of books, which is very exciting. So I started The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison last night. I'm buddy reading this with Stephanie. This is the second in the series. And this is a really neat um, blending of science fiction and fantasy. And it deals with... Um, kind of plate tectonics and global warming and kind of stuff like that. It's really neat. It's very, this one is is opening up in a very confusing what in the world is going on kind of way, which is really neat to figure out. The first one did the same and we figured it out in the end, Stephanie and I together. So we're gonna figure this one out too and enjoy the process. And then I've decided to go ahead and start Florida by Lauren Groff because we're running out of time in Florida and I just want to get into it while I'm here. This is a short story collection, I think contemporary, based in Florida, which is my home state. So, and then I also want to get, <laughs> get into this hefty tome. Um, the Making Gulf, The Gulf, The Making of an American Sea by Jack E. Davis. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. This is a nonfiction about the formation of the Gulf of Mexico, which is, you know, my home, my home. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and start I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. This one I'm going to listen to on audio. It's about an hour and a half um, to where we're going this morning. So I need an audiobook, and I am also listening to Because of Miss Bridgerton, which is a Regency romance uh, with Brie and Katie from Katie's Book Nook and Brie Hill. Um, but I've got I've gotten to the halfway point in that book, and it's a little awkward to listen to in the car with my 14-year-old, and he's going with me, so. <laughs> Um, we're going to put that one on hold and listen to I'll Be Gone in the Dark today. So yeah, let's go. Well, it's kind of interesting. Porter John, Florida style. Oh yeah, it's very historical. That full of liquid form, and if he does that properly, it should solidify. He should be able to make ice using this refrigeration concept. So what he now has to do is get a pump to actually work uh, to pull air out of the atmosphere. And what he begins to do is find different ways to power this pump. He's using animal power. He's using wind power. Hey, Mr. Gold. Oh, it's a bookstore. I 
for dessert. Your coffee, baby. Hey, we are headed to my brother's house so he can take us out in his boat. Say hello, baby. Look at that hair. That is awesome, right? Not. Um, we're going to be listening to I'll Be Gone in the Dark on the way over and this is excellent. We listened to it in the car yesterday and got about 100 pages in and so good. Part of it is written as a memoir um, of Michelle McNamara. Her, not her life really, but her thoughts on researching tri crime fiction and her motivations and just all about that. Um, and then the crime fiction part in her research, research is so fascinating. Um, and the crime part is pretty gruesome and really but she writes it briefly, so it's not too bad. It just depends on your perspective on that, I guess. But great book, so gotta go. Stop. This is Future Doris, and you guys are about to get a lesson in Southern linguistics. What kind of shark's that? Bull shark. He'll bite you. He's gonna bite me. I'm not gonna get up there in his face. I cannot. Get the sandwich. Crabs and I don't get any crabs, not a dozen or two. I, hope. I mean, we see about a dozen of traps, what we looked at. We didn't look at about half of them on the most threatened. We looked at the ones that probably had most of the crabs. There's a couple we put off short because evil out there, I hope they get got a few. Get that catfish for us. I got them. That's I use the big old bait. I usually use about one of them. I usually use these straight ones like these here. Where's Ethan at? Yeah, they're in here. Yeah, where is Ethan? Little silver like that. Yeah, just tie you about it. I've done it before many times. Where's that bait at? Put a lead, put a lead, a lead, a swivel, and a lead. Blue sky. Where'd they go? He's right there. There's one right there. Like his mate or yeah. Don't stick your hand in the water. Where? Yeah, they're huge. I'm gonna jump on them, Papa. Where? Three of them. They're right there. They just turned around. You just missed all of them. Yeah. Oh, orgy. Right there, right there, right there. Where it comes. Where? Right here. Right there. See them in the water right here? See them? Right there, right there. Oh, yeah, I see it. Get it, Troy! Throw it in! Holy crap. Thank you. Another one right here. Woo! Y'all getting anything? What? You getting anything? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, little horseshoe crab exoskeleton. These things are prehistoric. There's a big one right there. Sand spurs. That's a vicious beast right there. Those are ouchy. Home again, home again, jiggity jig. Poor baby. People. Hey, it's Monday afternoon. Time flies, right? <laughs> I left off Friday. Um, we went out in the boat with my brothers. And then when we got in, my sisters wanted to go to dinner, so we did that. And then Saturday was just, you know, the huge family gathering, seafood dinner, and I think there were 26 people in the, my parents' little house. So, yeah, that was an all-day affair. And then Sunday, I had to drive all day to get back home to Tennessee. So here we are, back with the bookshelves and the kitties. We're so happy to see our kitties. 
And yeah, and this morning I had to get up and go tutor first thing. So yeah, I'm in real clothes instead of pajamas. There's that. I should film a video since I even ironed this morning, but I'm just kind of um, in that not wanting to do anything, not knowing what I want to do. I mean, I did unpack already. There's that. And I cleaned up the kitty party. Um, and I cooked my son lunch. I've been productive. But now I just, I don't know if I just want to watch booktube videos all afternoon because I had almost got my watch later list down to 100 and now it's back over 200 again because I had to do all that socializing in Florida and I kind of want to read all day because I didn't get much at all of reading done the last half of the week because of all that socializing um, and I need to do comments. I haven't done that like in two weeks I think or three I don't know and I need to make I, th I think I need to get out my bullet journal and make a to-do list because I need to start thinking about work related things I don't want to but I need to so yeah but anyway I did finish I'll be gone in the dark in the car yesterday and if you are into crime fiction this is Stellar. This was so, so good. She was a tremendous writer. Such a loss. Um, I don't even know what to say. I mean, the title says it all, but yeah, this is excellent. So, so good. Um, and I actually did finish, um, because of Miss Bridgerton, on audio as well. That was their Regency romance that I had going and there was only one more racy scene and I just kind of turned the volume way down. <laughs> Drove with it in my ear for a minute but um, yeah that was that was fun. A great car read and I did finally start Florida by Lauren Groff. I read the first short story in here last night after we got home and I don't even care if the rest of the book is garbage because I loved that first story. It really resonated with me. I knew, I knew, I just, I knew she was going to be a great short story writer um, based on the first chapter of Fates and Furies. It's just, her writing is gorgeous. I, I didn't even finish that novel because I didn't like um, the topic the thematically but I loved this short story the first one it I don't know she's she walks this line of is that PC or not and you know did she really just say that she did just say that um, but it was just I don't know I don't know all the thoughts I think sometimes we're getting a little a little too sensitive in society um, and just the being in Florida, my home state, her, her love of that just really resonated with me. So, and it's beautiful. It's going to look so pretty on my mantle. So yeah, um, looking forward to reading more of this today. I do want to check it out and see if I like the second story. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I need to make a video or two or three, so I think I need to get the bullet journal out and start making those lists. Anyway, I am going to wrap this video up and post it for you, and I will chat with you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.